Hey, I want to ask you a question. Read this with me and I want you to tell me if this is a fluent English response. The topic, tell me about studying English. Here's what the student said. There are many languages spoken around the world. Some people learn English and some people learn Spanish. I study English, but it's a bit hard sometimes. I still like it. My classmates also study English with me. We use books in class and then the internet at home. Now, is this a fluent English response? Is this something a native English speaker would say? The answer is no. And today I want to explain to you why this is not a good response and how to finally give a fluent English response like a native English speaker. Are you ready? I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Now I do want to remind you before we jump in to download the English with Tiffany app. If you haven't already downloaded it, what are you waiting for? The link is right in the description. Start studying now and join thousands of other students around the world. Click the link in the description right now and download the English with Tiffany app. Now we looked at an example response and I told you that it was not a fluent English response. Let me show you a great response. So we have this individual speaking with her friend. She starts off. English is a language that is studied by millions of people around the world. She continues. Some people say that it is the number one language and other people say that it is not that important. Uh, but in my opinion, it is important for everyone to learn English. I think that speaking English can help you get a better job, travel around the world or travel more around the world and also experience other cultures. So I think everyone should learn to speak English. Now this, my friend is an amazing response, a fluent English response. So let me explain to you, let me break down what she said and help you do the exact same thing. So the first part of what she said was right here. Number one, you see it right here. English is a language that is studied by millions of people around the world. You see, the first thing she did was state the topic or the question. She stated what she was going to be talking about. You see, the first step is to state the topic that is being discussed. This will set the foundation and help your listener focus on what you are going to say. This is something that I've tried to teach all of my students. I've been a teacher for a long time and I've had thousands of students. And sometimes you think that fluency is just about speaking for a long period of time. Well, actually fluency is all about you connecting with your listener. So you must first start by stating the topic or the question. Now, after you've done this and the listener understands, you're going to move on to part number two, which is exactly what she did. Remember, she said, some people say that it's the number one language and other people say that it is not that important. What she did was she stated other basic views very quickly. You see step two, the second step is to state various views on the topic. This will show that you are aware of other viewpoints and that you have chosen your viewpoint after a lot of careful thought. You see that fluency is so much more than just the words you use. It's about the way you think and helping the listener realize, oh my goodness, this individual has really thought about his or her answer. This individual is really able to organize his or her thoughts in English. So when you let the other individual know the person listening that, Hey, I am aware that there are other viewpoints on this topic, on this subject. Again, you're letting them know that what you're about to say in part three can be trusted and that you've thought well before you gave your answer. So this is step two. Now, step three is where it gets very interesting. Step three is where she said right here, in my opinion, it is important for everyone to learn English. This is where things start to change. You state your viewpoint clearly. 
Step number one, you've stated the topic or question. Step number two, you've given kind of an overall viewpoint of other people, right? Very important. And then you come in with your point of view. So the third step is to state your viewpoint clearly, very clearly. She said right here, it is important for everyone to learn English. Very clear. We know exactly what her opinion is. Continuing, this will let the listener know what your idea is and will make them curious to know more about your idea. This is why part three is so important and she did it so well. Now I do want to pause really quickly and thank today's sponsor. This episode is being brought to you by Cambly and you all know how much I love Cambly. Cambly is an awesome company. They have tutors from America, tutors from Australia, tutors that are ready to help you improve your English fluency. So everything I'm teaching you today, you can practice with your Cambly tutor. Now I want to let you guys know something. I know that you love my lessons. I know that you are learning a lot. Well, I'm only able to do this for you because of companies like Cambly. Cambly supports me, helps me in my desire to help 1 billion students around the world. So you can help me by clicking the link in the description. You can get a free 10 minute lesson or you can get 40% off of any 12 month plan. Cambly wants to help you. That's why they partner with me and said, Tiffany, let's help students around the world learn English. So all of your lessons are recorded. Tutors are available 24 seven. There are one on one English private classes. And I know that you're going to love Cambly. So support me, support yourself by clicking the link in the description right now, getting your free 10 minute lesson, or even taking your English to the next level and getting 40% off of any 12 month plan. Again, Cambly, thank you so much for partnering with me. We are really going to help students around the world speak English and student. Remember, join me on my goal to help students. And all you have to do is click the link in the description and get your free 10 minute lesson or get your 40% off of any 12 month plan. Thank you again, Cambly. You know how much I love you all. <laughs> all right, guys. So again, thank you, Cambly. And we have the first three parts of any fluent English response. Now let's look at the fourth part. You've stated clearly what your opinion is. What she did next was very interesting. She said, I think that speaking English can help you get a better job, travel more around the world and also experience other cultures. She did step number four. She gave three supporting pieces of information. You see the fourth step is to state your viewpoint clearly. This will let the listener know what your idea is and will make them curious to know more about your idea. That's exactly what she did. So again, once she got to part three, she stated clearly what her idea was, and then she supported her idea in step four. This is exactly what you have to do in order to give a fluent English response. It's not about the number of words. It's about following these parts and making sure they are a part of every response you give in English. So again, part four, give three supporting pieces of information. Now, after she did this in an amazing way, she moved on to part number five and she said, so I think everyone should learn to speak English part number five restate the topic and your viewpoint. You see the fifth step is to reset, restate, excuse me, the topic and your viewpoint. This will help the listener remember what you said. I can remember so many times when I was in class teaching my students in South Korea, and I was trying to help them understand the importance of restating the topic and their viewpoint at the end. They would say, teacher, why I've already stated my point. I said, remember English fluency is all about the listener. How much information can they remember from what you said? If they're able to remember the information, then they will feel like you are fluent in English. So when you come back at the end and restate, 
repeat your viewpoint. It's like a trigger telling their brain, Hey, remember this part. And again, it makes you seem more like a fluent English speaker. So once again, if we go back and look at this conversation between these two individuals, we'll see that she included all five parts in what she said. And that's why this response was amazing. And that's exactly why it was a fluent English response. Now, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you remember all five parts when you go to respond to someone, because that means you are fluent in English, including all five parts. All right. Don't forget to support by clicking the link in the description to get your 10 minute free lesson with Cambly. And also remember to download the English with Tiffany app as well. I really hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you next time. But as always, remember to speak English. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. I've been longing to sing that song. <laughs> I couldn't sing it last week because my voice was bothering me and my throat was bothering me. But this week, story time. Yes. All right. So today I actually have a story for you about music. So this happened when I was in South Korea. Now in South Korea, they have norebang, right? Nore means song, bang means room in Korean. So a norebang was basically just a karaoke room for those that know karaoke rooms. And my fellow teachers actually got me into going to karaoke rooms or norebangs with them. So we would go maybe once, once or twice a month, like on a Saturday night. And at that time I was studying, um, for my Korean exam. So I was really busy, but they would pull me out and get me to go to the norebangs with them. So one night it was myself, my roommate, and one of our other close friends. So it was, there were three of us and we were, you know, in the norebang and they said, Hey, Tiff, two of our other friends are going to come and join us. I said, okay, great. Now it was myself, my roommate. And again, one of our other friends and you know, I like to sing, but, and my roommate and my other friend, they like to sing too. But one of the other girls was an amazing singer. She can blow. Oh, here's an expression for you. If someone can blow, it means they can really sing like Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston. They had powerful voices, right? And the other friend, so one of them could blow. And there was another friend and she was a real small, her name was April. April, if you're watching this, welcome. And I hope you enjoyed the story. <laughs> April was kind of short small frame, super sweet. I mean, everybody loved April, super sweet girl. So I, I knew that when the other girl, um, oh my goodness, her name is failing me. Um, okay. Anyways, the other girl, when we knew when she arrived, she was going to blow. So we were looking forward to her songs. So she came and of course she sang, I mean, she could sing like, um, Aretha Franklin. She had a very powerful voice. And then my other friends, my roommate and my other friends said, Tiff, you have to hear April sing. And I was like, oh, okay. Again, small frame, just real nice, real kind, sweet, did not expect anything, but I was like, yes, Hey, this is a time for all of us to have a good time. So they said, April, please sing. She was like, no guys, I'm okay. Like really sweet. Literally. I'm okay guys. Not tonight. And they were like, please, please. And I saw by the way they were begging her that maybe this girl could really sing. So she said, okay. So she picked, uh, maybe it's you. I think that's Beyonce. I think <laughs> anyways, she picked that song. Now I know Beyonce songs or Jennifer Hudson's songs are very difficult because they have very high, hey, high voices, very strong voices. So I was like, wow, this, this girl's going to sing this song. I said, Hey, we're all here to have a good time. It's not about who can sing, who can't sing. We had a ball. I would sing songs that were too high for me and I just have a ball and we'd all be singing. So the song starts and you know, again, she did real like, kind of like, okay guys, like that was kind of how her voice sounded. So she started the song and I was like, oh, okay, she had, you know, she could sing. Right. But she was real low. 
And so it got to the part where you had to kind of add a little bit more. Now I'll sing a little bit of it again. My voice is kind of a little still struggling a little bit because I was sick, but she got to the part. She said, baby, it's you. You're the one I want. Right. So she was kind of building up. I said, okay. And she got to the part that required a lot of power. She stood up and said, baby, it's you. You're the one I want. And she was blowing again. When she started singing, she sounded exactly like the original song. And I sat there with my mouth open. This little girl was blowing us all away. Now, of course we were in there having a ball dancing around saying, get it girl. You can do it. And what it taught me is sometimes the outside package may not look like what's going on inside. She was a sweet girl. You would have never known that that powerful voice again, like Aretha, like Beyonce, like Jennifer Hudson could come out of that small frame. So we had a great time and we always wanted her to join us. We said, you can sing. We'll be your background dancers, background singers. <laughs> we had a great time. So, uh, the point of this story honestly is sometimes you may be underestimated. Sometimes people may think, ah, you're not that good at speaking English or ah, you can't achieve your goal. Never forget that you can do whatever you put your mind to. And just like she shocked me, I want you to go out there and shock somebody with your English speaking abilities. Follow the lesson from today, five parts, and you'll speak English just like me. All right. I love you. And I will see you next week.